Hey, 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 what's your self-talk? Jabari is here from What's Your Self-Talk Podcast. And listen, I want you to download Anchor right now because chances are you're listening to this and you're saying, I got some things I want to share. I have some things that I've wanted to put in a podcast form. Here's the opportunity. Anchor is free. You can do it from your phone and you can be on all the different podcast stations all in one app. Okay. So what I need you to do is stop waiting. Stop waiting for the perfect time. Analysis paralysis. Do it now. You'll thank me later. What's your self-talk? Hey, 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 what's your self-talk? This is Jabari and back again to always ask you that question. What's your self-talk? Um, and, you know, my job is always to ask that question when it's come to your work life and um, your personal life, just to see what are the things you need to do. So today we are continu- continuing our election session as we are getting to get ready to start voting. Uh, last week, you heard um, a group of great individuals who I got a chance to sit down with, explain some of the roles, explain uh, what to expect from certain people in your local government. And uh, this week, I wanted to make a little bit of a shift because me personally, I am a Christian and I've always struggled at a young age to really understand how do I go about looking at voting or what am I supposed to do when it comes to voting? Um, And I don't think by no means everything that I'm going to get into is to try to sway you to vote for one individual. But if more so, it's just to educate you and to encourage you to think about this and even more so given my viewpoint as who I am and how I'm choosing to grow. And hopefully that will challenge you in a very unique way. Um, And that was the whole point of this election session is, okay, what are the things that needs to be done? What are the things need to be talked about? And what are the things that need to be done? And one thing that I love um, about those bold Christian are the ones who come out and say, okay, these are the things that we need to focus on. And somebody who I, respect and admire a lot. Uh, Tony Evans, um, he is a pastor in Dallas, Texas. Um, I've read a lot of his material on Kingdom Marriage, Kingdom Men, um, and he actually started a series talking about Kingdom Voting. And I wanted to just get a little bit into some of the things I think that was super helpful for how he approached it. And I think as Christians, for those who um, I think this message for a lot of for those who are Christian, for those who are not Christians, uh, and also for those who have been abused um, by those in the church. Because I think at the end of the day, it's grace for all of us. But the reality is, is that you still need the proper perspective on how to live in life. And um, like I say, I have a son and he's going to need to understand the reality like these can be difficult times and difficult things and it can be uncomfortable uh, but the reality is is that we still have a calling to do and we have to stay committed to that uh, and so I hope this is uh, very helpful for you as I just kind of really help draw out a way and a perspective to look at this and um, help it influence your way to view why you should vote and how you as a Christian need to view voting so I like the metaphor uh, that he used um, when he talks about football. And when you think about football, you have two teams that's going against each other and they are trying to do everything to become the winner. And so it can be a lot of chaos. It can be a lot of things that can go wrong. So just for football, they have established referees. And in this case, these referees are on not either side. Their job is simple. Um, New York and the commissioner have put together a book of rules. And that book is to guide and instruct this chaos into some order that will allow the team to move forward 
without it being, you know, huge friction and huge uh, problems. So that book that guides them, give you directions on what and how to do. And so that is the job of the referee. And one of the reasons I love this um, example is because when you do look at the game, regardless of how much you can get frustrated at it, um, the referee job is not to take either sides. Now, no need to try to get into the story of those who probably have abused uh, their uh, position as referees, but we know the main job of referees is to make sure that um, everything is being done according to the rule book. And when we think about that referee, he have to take his personal opinions out. He have to be able to not decide to call this because he didn't feel like that was the right call. If that was a call that needed to be made according to the rule book, then that's the call that needs to be made. That's the way that it needs to um, go and need to function. And so when I think about that example, and I think about just us as Christians, is that, you know, we have been given uh, the book, in this case, of being a Bible, to help us and guide us and understand ways to operate and function, because we have already committed to say, hey, we want to make sure God's kingdom comes first. And I love how Tony Evans explained this. He said, kingdom voting is the opportunity and responsibility of committed Christians to partner with God for the expansion of his rule in society through civil government. And when that is done, and when that is done correctly, then that will allow God, that will allow God and his goals and his mission on this earth to be done. God is a very selfish God for those who understand it. So the reality is, is that he wants everything to reflect him and go back to him. And I think it's important because when you jump back for a second and you say, OK, wait a minute, Jabari, I didn't really expect to get into this, you know, kind of a sermon. But I think if you look at this on a very, very general level, any and everything around us needs to start somewhere, whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, whether you are a boss, um, over on your own business, each and every one of those people have to be able to govern and make decisions according to certain standards and certain ways. And those who have been successful in either of those fields have had ways to govern and guide themselves to get to their in result. And I think what we have to understand is that when it comes to voting and when it comes to the government, that is so many different um, loopholes that we all can fall into that we need to jump back and say, OK, who am I as a Christian? How am I supposed to view this? And then from there, how can I be able to go about and make the right decision? And I'll put it in my show notes, but um, if you want a chance to listen to it in depth, Tony Evan did a very great job at just really, really uh, fleshing this out a little bit more, giving more details, giving more examples, and just using great um, words to transition and help give you the full understanding. And my job is to give you just a, a quick glimpse of that so that as we move forward, you can do this with the right understanding and intention on how to go about and vote and why you should because think about it this way any time that god has been further from a person from a family schools church a community and even more in this case a society the more chaos has actually come about i want you to think about that Anytime we take God out of the equation, chaos comes in somewhat form or fashion. And the very opposite has when God is in the midst of everything, it's less chaos. 
Um, I mean, a lot of things were founded on a lot of the principles that come from the Bible. And one thing that for those who want you to go to one scripture, and it's actually going to be in song. And song for those who don't fully understand the Bible or understand what song is. Song is uh, just a book of wisdom, and it's actually in the Old Testament of the Bible, and it is songs that people would go out and sing, and it's just a form of wisdom that they knew that this was the righteous way to live, and so they will meditate on those things. So if you, as a person, knew you wanted to get better, or say you was um, trying to understand what is the best way to live, um, the book of Song and Proverbs and Job and Ecclesiastics are a great example of wisdom literature. And so those is just basic principles or basic guidance of how to live your life. And and that's basically how I'm going to use this one scripture to just give you a better understanding. Um, it's, it's not that's the context around this book. And anybody who knows about Bible, context is the most important thing to make sure you keep it within the context. And so I'm sharing this to you in the context of this is a wisdom literature and it can be used in the way how I'm using it right now. Um, but it says in um, Psalm 33, 12 is blessed is the nation who God is the Lord. And blessed is that nation. So the nation in this case is the United States. Um, and you think about how we as a society have opportunity to vote for the people who are going to be in the office. That is not welcome in other countries as much as it is here. And not to even go back to why, you know, as so many people have fought for the right, even black rights to be able to vote, as women be able to vote. And um, because everybody viewpoint counts. And so I just want you to think about this as we are coming up on an election and think about what am I doing as a Christian to make sure that I'm taking part in being a committed Christian, making sure that I am as informed as I can possibly be and make that decision based off of what God wants for my city, for my state and for my country. Because it's important to make sure you're involved and to make sure but now I'm involved. And before I wrap it up, I'll let you know, I, I've never I've always been that person that used to just stand back and say much. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what to do. So the rally is I just didn't do anything. And I think I've got to a point where I realized that's no longer acceptable. And this is me saying, let's go together and make the difference and make the change. And so I hope that was helpful. My job is to challenge you. <laughs> and that's what I plan to do. So once again, even if you're not a Christian, that's perfectly fine. But I want you to understand what guides me, what give me understanding, what give me order in a midst of a chaotic world. Um, and the reality is of I believe that if we as individuals who are firm believers do not continue to inject ourselves in society and make a difference between with how the way we live, but then how the way we express that out to others, then it's going to continue to be chaos. And so this is one of the ways that I have been led to do that is through this podcast. So I hope that is helpful. And I hope you understand that um, it's no hard feelings if you don't want to ever hear from me again or listen to me again. That's fine. Um, I'm doing God's work. And uh, that's the whole point of this podcast. And that's part of what Wish Yourself Talk have always come from. And with that, we're going to wait until next week and we're going to roll into um, more of the election season. Um, and we'll stop it from there. So thank you for listening. I hope you share this with one person. I hope you give me feedback. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Is. Um, and. I look forward to hearing from you.
and getting back with you next week. So, you know that question I'm going to always ask you. Election season is upon us. What's your self-talk?